harm does crypto jacking cause victims and how can victims be aware of the problem in the first place and eventually get rid of it? Malicious crypto mining or crypto jacking has been prevalent for almost a decade now. Hackers are leveraging cloud services such as Kubernetes due to its large pool of resources. In this video, we will use Falco Runtime Security to effectively detect these crypto miners. What is Kubernetes crypto jacking? This is a method used by attackers to mine cryptocurrency using someone else's Kubernetes cluster. The attacker first gains initial access to the cluster via a vulnerability. Attacker then plants C2 agents that will call back to a C2 server to make a persistent connection. If you want to understand more how a C2 agent gets planted to a Kubernetes cluster, watch this video above. Next step is to deploy the required Kubernetes manifest that will pull malicious container image that will run as a daemon set. It is run as a daemon set to make sure it uses all worker nodes in the cluster. Once the daemon sets are running, they will now do the mining and regularly connects to a mining pool. Mining is done by solving complex mathematical problems. These are resource intensive, that's why they need large compute resources. Once a problem is solved, attacker will now receive a payout in a form of cryptocurrency. How can Falco detect this? Once Falco is installed on the cluster, it will be able to detect malicious activity such as hacker initial access, connection to miner pools, launching of new containers, and outbound connection to a C2 server. Those events can be piped to different channels. In this demo, we will use Slack. Now, let's go to my Kali. Like with any other demos, I will use a wrapper shell script to install Falco inside my development Kubernetes cluster. If you want to know about my kind setup and how to use Helm, feel free to visit the video in the pinned comment below. First step is to add the Falco Helm repo and update our local copies. Next is to install Falco chart on its own namespace. After that, I will enable Falco sidekick so that we can send the events to our Slack channel. Lastly, I will only enable events with priority warning and above so that we will reduce the noise we will receive. Before running that script, I will quickly show you how to set up a Slack channel and get the required webhook. First, you need to create an account in Slack using your own email. Once you signed up with Slack, go to apps directory and search for incoming webhook. Inside the incoming webhook configuration page, choose create channel and name it anything you want. Once the channel is created, you can now see it on the list. Select it, copy the webhook provided and convert it into base64 encoded string. That is the value you will provide in the Falco Sidekick configuration as you saw from the shell script a while ago. Don't forget to save the settings at the bottom page. Good news is that Slack is now available in Linux, so I will get a copy of Debian package and install it. Lastly, open it so you will immediately be notified and verify that the channel is present. Now it's time to run the Falco installation script. Now that installation is done, let's put it to the test by deploying a crypto miner. Why is it so fast? When we install Falco, it injects a kernel module into the system. It also installs a user space library that listens for syscalls from that module. That library then forwards the event to different channels such as Slack. It is important to note that Falco provides default rules upon installation. Let's analyze some of these. The most common event you will receive is the execution of a binary not part of base container image. It is generated from this default rule. Containers consist of several image layers. Anything that changed on top of the base layer, such as installation of executables, will be detected. You can also see an essential information such as the process name that was rendered via an output field. While this default rule seems usable, this is very generic and catered for all sorts of malicious activities. We want something that targets crypto mining, so let's create a dedicated rule for it. I will reinstall Falco, but this time I will put all settings in a Helm values file for convenience. The first section of values file will be the original settings we previously specified in the command line arguments of Helm. Do note that in this format, you no longer need to base64 encode the Slack URL. The next section will be our custom rule for crypto mining. We will specify a list of common miner pools. We will put only a few for demonstration purposes. Similar with miner pools, we will also specify some of the most common crypto mining binaries. Next is we will create a reusable rule in detecting connection to miner pools by using a macro. We will specify network event types of send and connect. The event direction will use less than symbol so that it will detect the start of syscall event. We will then create the definition that links to the macro rule of detecting the outbound connection to miner pools. Lastly, we will create the rule that will detect the crypto mining binaries. If you notice in this definition, we didn't use a macro, but instead we specify the rule directly on the condition field. Our values file is all set, so let's now deploy again Falco. Let's recreate also the crypto miner pod. As we see, during pod startup, some of the Falco default rules already kicked off. We also finally see the event that detects the crypto mining binaries, as well as the outbound connection to the miner pool. 
We only tackle very basic functionalities of Falco and there are endless possibilities on how we can construct our rule sets. Are you using Falco on your cluster? Feel free to share your experience on the comments below. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.